Hi, <clears throat> I'm Barbara, and I'm a plasticaholic. Um, this means that I use plastic at least 100 times a day, um, from when I wake up in the morning and I touch my plastic phone cover to snooze a few times before getting out of bed, until my lunchbox, my pen, my grocery bag, the keyboard of my computer, even the toilet seat was made out of plastic. <laughs> um, but there are also a lot of other objects that are actually hidden and have hidden plastics in them, like paint or even my nylon stockings. Once plastics were actually designed as a solution, a way to make exclusive objects like, for example, hairbrushes, available to anyone. Can I maybe ask who of you owns a hairbrush? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> quite a lot of people. Hairbrushes used to be something very exclusive because it was dependent on very scarce materials like ivory or wood. But because of the invention of plastics a little bit over a century ago, now we can all own our own plastic hairbrush. And soon after its inventions, plastic became the symbol of consumerism. And I think it's safe to say that we are actually all plasticaholics. But it's not all bad, because there are also a lot of essential functions in our society that are made possible by plastics, such as a lot of medical inventions, like the tubes for a baby incubator, or, for example, blood bags. However, even these essential plastics are eventually being wasted. And only a very small percentage of the plastics that we waste are currently being recycled. We calculated that in Amsterdam Nord, 95.5% percent of all plastics are not being collected separately nor being recycled and most of the plastics that we waste end up in a huge waste incinerator where the resources that went into the plastic waste are literally getting burned and get lost <coughs> and sometimes it's even worse plastics become litter and end up in nature and eventually often in the ocean where they are part of a huge plastic soup, a huge island of floating plastics that are polluting our ecosystems and animals that are eating from it. And there's more, because last year geologists discovered this piece of sediment, where rocks and plastics have now literally become indistinguishable. And if you imagine that in a few centuries from now, archaeologists will research our time period, they will probably call it the plastic age. Because that's what you'll find in our layers of the earth. Okay, so what happens with that 4.5% of plastics that we do recycle? It is first sent halfway across the world to China or India, where it is industrially reprocessed and turned into new products and then sent all the way back here to eventually be wasted again. So, we are all addicted to plastic and need them, need plastic products for a lot of different purposes in our lives. And I don't think we're, we can say that we are dealing with the plastic waste in an optimal way. I would like to do something about this. I work for an organization in Amsterdam called Cities, and we research global urban trends and come up with local solutions. And we try to tackle these global urban problems on a level that we can actually make a difference. In our case, the neighborhood that I live in, Amsterdam Noord, and more specifically, the Noorder Park. This is where we're gonna start with Wasted. Our, our neighborhood laboratory for plastic waste upcycling. Here, we'll invite people 
that live in the neighborhoods around the Norder Park to participate in collecting and reprocessing their own plastic waste. And by this, we make it transparent for everyone to see what happens with your waste after you dispose of it. And by doing so, we give value to the plastic that you waste. How do we reach all the people in this neighborhood? For this, we are lucky to have our wasted friends. Local organizations, schools, businesses that are collecting their own plastic waste, but also helping us with spreading the word about wasted. But that's not enough. We'd like to give something back to people that make the effort to separate their plastic waste from different waste streams and to create an incentive for people. So, for every full bag of plastic waste that you bring to our laboratory, we'll give you one wasted coin in return. And this wasted coin you can use at local businesses and, ex and get a reward in return. So, for example, discount on a cup of coffee or maybe on a new hairbrush. Um, but still, throwing away your trash is a routine. And routines are extremely difficult to change. Because, honestly, I don't really think when I'm throwing away my trash. And I think most of you don't either. And because of that, you might read or watch or listen to a TED talk about plastic waste, but the next time that you throw away your plastic waste, you don't connect those two dots. But luckily, there is a group of people that is really good at changing their routines. Children. And for them, we have the wasted school package. We will try to use them to reach out to a wider community. So, the school package is a set of three lessons that are aimed at turning all the kids of the neighborhood into plastic experts. And we start with telling about our addiction to plastic and the history of plastic. After that, they will get a crash course in plastic archaeology and learn how to distinguish different types of plastics, which ones are harmful or not. And finally, through a workshop in our laboratory, they will actually discover how they can create new products out of the plastic <coughs> that they wasted. And I hope that as soon as all these children know everything they want to know about plastic, they will convince their parents to also start separating their plastics and so create a snowball effect. So, there I am with my laboratory in the park and I have the wasted friends, I have uh, the schools and the children and the households and the businesses all bringing their plastic waste to us. What to do with all of this plastic waste? We would like to create something <coughs> to give back to that community. And that's the challenge that we gave to the Wasted Design Club, a group of young product designers that came together in January. And they come up with this, the Wasted Block. It's a multifunctional block that can be combined and recombined into any product that you like. It's made out of LDPE plastic, and that's the type of plastic that we waste the most. It is commonly used for plastic <coughs> bags, but also for food wrapping, for example. So, we create these blocks, and you might want to use them to build a plastic container, a, a plant container out of plastic. But as soon as you don't need your plant container anymore, because maybe your plant died, you just take apart the blocks and you turn it into a chair or a table or a bench or whatever you can think of. And thus, you never have to throw this wasted block away again. And this is what makes the wasted block the essence of what I want to do with wasted. It gives value to plastic that was wasted. It enables me to give something back to the community that produced this plastic waste, but also made the effort to separate it. And it's designed to never be disposed of again and thus really closes a material loop. It's for this reason that I think that we should all get wasted. Thanks. Thanks.